Hey, hey, Martin Rodriguez here, and you're watching the Review Sanctum, where everything and anything may be reviewed. And today we're going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We just saw it yesterday. It was so awesome. It really blew my mind of, like, just how awesome it was. So kind of... I was kind of bracing myself because, oh, you know, it's a sequel, and it cannot be good as the first one. They'll mess it up somewhere, but no, this was, like, super awesome. And, um, well, basic story synopsis deals with the mystery of the first movie, because the first movie we did know that, um, Quill's mother died and stuff, and he was abducted by aliens and all that, but, like, he never really knew, um, like, who his father was, so this movie really goes into who his father was, which also kind of explains, I guess what people thought it was kind of weird how in the last movie, where he grabbed the Infinity Stone, how, like, he didn't die, he's still supposed to be, like, a human, and he didn't die, so this kind of explains that he's not exactly all human, and, um, but what can I say, it's a very good movie, um, all the characters return, even Yandu comes back in it, and we got new villains, um, I guess you can say the... I should say, I guess antagonist of the movie, because he doesn't reveal himself to be a villain until like later, is um, Ego, the living planet, play, um, played by Kurt Russell. And um, honestly, he did a very good job with him. Honestly, um, I know he was a giant planet with his face and all that, and uh, Fantastic Four comics. So when I saw him, like, you know, a dude saying, oh, my name is Ego, I'm, I was thinking like, oh, it's going to be like some guy named Ego. But I was surprised that no, he, he was a living planet, I guess. Like, a part of him took human form, but, like, and he can go to other worlds, but he does have to, like, return to the planet or he'll lose his, his powers and all that. And I guess he's seeking purpose and stuff. And, of course, as you would expect, it's something that will endanger the galaxy, so that's where our heroes come in. And, um, any general thoughts on the movie? It was awesome. Volume 2. Mm-hmm. That was really good. It the introduction, I'm like, okay, it was cute. It was mostly, obviously... It wasn't really actually focused on the Guardians, it was actually focused on Groot screwing around, and obviously he's baby Groot, so he's just screwing around, running around, doing whatever, at, while he's like the forefront while the people, like everybody's in the background fighting this slime monster, worm monster. As it goes on, it gets interesting, and then Nebula comes in, and obviously Yondu comes in, which I got to meet the actor who played Yondu, which is pretty cool. I wish I could go back and be like, you were, oh, oh, I loved your character in the volume two, but really good character. Um, here you go. Annoying. He's annoying. Just, and how he screwed himself, oh, well, it's obviously spoiler warning. Oh, but, yeah, um, well, it'll be spoiler warning in case you guys didn't already see the movie. But, um, how he's like, I, sad thing, I had to put that brain tumor in your mother's head. And that, like, knocks Peter in back into reality. And, like, you killed my mother. I'm like, why would you tell that right before like your plan you was finished? But, anyway, it was good. Um, I don't know what to really say. Mm -hmm. I agree with everybody. It was really awesome. Music wasn't as good as it was for the first one. Some people were saying that, that it wasn't as good as the first one. Yeah, the music was eh. Mm. eh. Well, the characters all had good moments. Obviously, since it's a sequel, we can avoid all the introductions and all that stuff. So, you know, Gamora had some moments. She had some sisterly moments with Nebula. Like, you really got to see exactly yeah. why they hate each other yeah. and stuff like that. Um, Drax was, he was a laughing, laughing goofy guy. He was laughing about everything. In oh, film. and, uh, what's her name? Mantis. I, I like her. I'm ugly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. And, yes, Mantis is a character that works for Ego. And, um, she's like an empath, I guess, she can feel other people's feelings and stuff. And, um, yeah, she had her moments with Drax, and, of course, Rocket Raccoon has his moments with watching over baby Groot, and also moments with Yandu that, I guess, kind of show that they're, they have similar pasts and similar motives and stuff like that. And, yeah, this also, it humanized Yandu a lot. It's kind of interesting. I don't know why, it's just the actor, he does, he does a very good job, and, you know, like we say, he's basically Blue Moral. So, Yandu kind of, again, more humanized and stuff, kind of, sort of, I don't know, it reminds me a bit of, like, when Merle rejoined Rick's crew and was trying to do right, because, he, he would, you know, he would never try on his brother. So, you know, it was kind of interesting, just the parallels, because, like I said, just 
his mannerisms and the way he talks and everything, it's it's Blue Merle and everything. And let me see. Oh, then of course we got Taser Face, which um, I made a mistake here. This is actually um, Yondu. Yondu. I just got confused because he does get a bigger Mohawk thing in there. Thank you. A bigger Mohawk thing in the movie. Yeah. So that's what confused me. But yeah, Taser Face is in the movie. <laughs> and, and that's the big joke that his face is his name and his. I don't know, it's a recurring joke and everything. And what else can I say? It's it's just a very good movie. I also like the aliens. I think that girl's name, Ashura high, or something like that. High Priestess or whatever. The way they fought, I, uh, because R Rocket can't keep his better fingers, better finger, um, sticky fingers off um, items, so he stole like the batteries they protected. So they found, that the, the people found out, and they chased after... Obviously, the Guardians, and the funny thing is, it's like gaming. Instead of actual manned ships, they're like I guess remote virtual control. reality, remote controlled um, pods, and it has like the pew pew pew. I love how I do my own like video effects. game sounds. Yeah, they're like in, I guess, giant simulation things playing the thing. While the real spaceships are flying empty, and the funny thing is, you can see even in the whenever you see the actual ship, I think you you can see their image, and obviously they see your image. Yeah, but the funny part is when there was only one guy left, it was like the arcade. The guy was playing, everybody's behind him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he almost got him. Oh, you, oh. and then he lost, and it's like you suck, and then they all <laughs> walk away. But the funny, I thought it was all that part funny, and then obviously he's like, oh, I could create a statue of Pac-Man and all this stuff. And, his, and at the end, the big battle was he actually transported or covered himself with rocks to form into Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Complete with the wooga woo woo sounds and yeah. everything else. I don't know. The movie was just, it was just so much cheese. And all big things. David Haff Hasselhoff. Mm -hmm. Makes a cameo. Oh, Sylvester Stallone made a cameo as one. I guess well, or it's not a cameo. It was, his name was in the freaking well, title. Yeah, I know, I know. So yeah, it wasn't part, like... But. It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't like, oh. Well, I was just surprised he was actually in it. Like, uh, yeah, we were surprised he was actually in it, but his name was revealed. It would be much of more of a surprise if he just randomly appeared and Google oh, and the leader of the Ravagers. You, know, you, you failed me. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the whole thing. But um, overall, without going into too much, I mean, even more spoilers, I guess, what can I say? It was an awesome movie. Um, uh, Rodino complains about it, but I had heard people say music wasn't as good as the first one, but, you know, we'll That'll see. That'll be my only complaint. Yeah. And then, do stay for the ending credit scenes, which was one, two, three? Like three of them, I think, yeah. Yeah, I did understand some of them now, and I talked to a couple of people, um... There's a scene where these random characters team up and they're like, yeah, and they're like that real diamond girl and all the weird characters. Apparently they were supposed to be the original Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy, but that didn't, you know, I guess it didn't hit off too well until, of course, we've got these guys now. So they made a cameo. And, um, I guess it's, well, whatever, it's heavy spoilers. You guys know by now. It's a Marvel movie. Stay till the end because you never know. But, um, Stanley is like the continuation of Stanley's scene. And he made himself like, remember when I was a delivery boy? I don't know what they said, like a FedEx Express person. And apparently there's a theory going on that um, Stan Lee is uh, hopping that the different universe. Well, that basically every Stan Lee cameo you see in all the movies, it's literally like him. Like it's always him. Like it is the same guy, even though like it doesn't make sense. or Yeah, so that's a big theory. And the last one is, well, it's probably all mixed up. The final scene we remember is uh, Team Groot uh, uh, being teen, a teen, so Groot's a teenager now. Like a rebellious teenager. And that was the funniest thing, because I was thinking, like, since it takes him so long, he was a baby throughout the whole movie, so I was thinking, like, it would have been so funny if they made a sequel when he was a teenager, and yup, there he is. They made him like that in the end credits and stuff. So he'll be back to normal for at least the um, 
the Guardian slash Avengers crossover. The thing is, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I forget it. And they already started filming that, too. That's another good good thing. And apparently, they do want to make a volume three. The director does want to make a volume three. It just depends, of course, if things don't change. You know, Hollywood and different directors or whatever. Um, the thing is, one of the ending scenes, I, I figured it out, too. I heard a character, but I don't know too much about him. But the character that was in the big paw thing and she wants to make you know send after the garden oh yeah that scene too I yeah and then adam scene. and i didn't i didn't get it adam warlock which is one of the powerful people in the universe so we'll see if he appears in the volume three or in the avengers you know slash guardians crossover obviously in this movie it does explain why nebula really hates thanos and why he she really wants to go after him so obviously even if she's not part of the team she'll probably pop in there somewhere to try to take him down and everything and I do have to say, Drax and Thor should probably get along just fine. They're both happy, cheery guys that want to go into battle and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, not, not much I can say. Like I said, the biggest thing was, it just it just surprised me. It just blew me away how incredibly awesome this movie was. I was afraid of this, you know, the sequels and stuff. Some people even say that Age of Ultron wasn't as good as the first Avengers and things like that. And, of course, people don't like the Iron Man sequels and all that. So, this one, like, this is awesome. One of the best... I think it's one of the best of all the Marvel movies. If you do like a top three, top five, should be in there. It's pretty good. Um, any final closing statements there? Mm -mm. All right. So this is Mark Rodriguez here and my assistant with the um, fidget spinners. Because, yes, they're back. They're back in style, I think. Back and in style. We make it sound like you had these in your ancient time where they made out of rocks. No, I'm talking, well, whatever. They're back. And they're back. Awesome. They never came back. Well, sell out, yeah, but this is brand new. Mm. No, it's the latest thing. Anyways, yes. guys. Yes. Anyways, guys, see you all next time where everything and anything may be reviewed. Maybe we'll review one of the fidget spinners. See ya. No.